To install the motherboard into our case, we first have to position the risers. The risers are designed to raise the motherboard off the back of the case to prevent an electrical short. The risers are screwed into positions around the back of the case to match up with screw holes on the motherboard. The risers have screw holes in them to allow another screw to go through the motherboard's holes and secure the motherboard to the case. Some cases, like this one, come with risers that are built in. The best way to find the positions for the risers in the case is to hold the motherboard in place and look for holes in the case that correspond to holes in the motherboard. Be sure to put risers wherever a screw can go through a hole in the motherboard. It's important not to add unneeded risers because any risers that don't correspond to a hole in the motherboard will make contact with the circuits on the back and short out the board. Once the risers are in place, we need to install the faceplate for the motherboard's external connectors on the back of the case. The faceplate is included with the motherboard. The case will usually come with a generic plate you have to remove. Press the edges of the plate from the outside of the case and it will pop out. Then slide the faceplate that came with the motherboard into place from the inside of the case. Press around its edges and it will snap in. To attach the motherboard, insert it into position and move it to the back of the case so the external connectors are sticking out the back. We have the case standing up because it's easier for shooting this video. Laying the case on its side before installing the motherboard is the best way. You should see the risers through the holes in the motherboard. Put the first screw in the top left hole, but leave it a little loose. This will hold the motherboard in place and still allow you to move it slightly in order to center the risers in the holes and add the remaining screws. Add the next screw at the bottom right of the motherboard and leave it loose as well. The rest of the screws can go in any order. Once all the screws are in, push the motherboard towards the back of the case and tighten down all the screws. The last step in installing the motherboard is to connect the cables from the front of the case. On this case, there are separate cables for power and reset buttons and hard drive and power LEDs, which attach to pins at the bottom of the motherboard. We'll check our motherboard's manual to locate and identify the pins. On the power and reset switch cables, the direction of the connector doesn't matter. For the power LED and hard drive LED, connect the cables so the wire marked with a plus or a triangle is facing left. If there isn't a marking, the colored cable is the positive one. This will ensure, in most cases, that they are attached in the correct direction. If it turns out that a light on the front of the case doesn't work, make sure the cable is connected to the right pins and try flipping it over. Most cases also have ports on the front panel for audio in and out and USB. The audio cable coming from the front panel connects to an F-Audio or AAFP header on the motherboard. The connector has one missing pin and will only go in one way. We're installing an add-on sound card in Lesson 8, so we will wait to install the audio cable. The USB cables coming from the front panel will go into headers on the motherboard. For USB 3.0, it's a 20-pin connector, which is tabbed, so it can only go in one way. For USB 2.0, it is a 9-pin connector, and there is a missing pin on one corner, so it will only go in one way. That's it. The motherboard is installed. In the next lesson, we'll install the cooling fans into the case.